Hey there YouTube, so for this video we're going to take a quick look at OAuth with GitHub and Fast API. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you can see here I'm using PyCharm, that's my IDE of choice, but feel free to use whichever you'd like. Uh, but just realize I'm going to be using PyCharm for this tutorial. So first, uh, I've opened PyCharm, got projects, so I'll create a new one. And I'm going to create a Fast API project. And uh, yeah, this is fine as far as places to place it. And then we'll just call this uh, GitHub OAuth, like so. Uh, I'm going to have it create the new virtual environment. This way, anything I install is not all over my uh, system. So I'll click on that, and then we'll click on Create. And it bumped over to my other screen, but I'll put it over here. Okay, so once we're all squared away here, uh, first things first is we got the import for the Fast API, the app equals Fast API. So this is obviously setting up all of the scaffolding or infrastructure required to get this app running. So let's go ahead and just run this just for the sake of running it. I'll go ahead and open this and I'll drag this over. And we can kind of see here that we have the message hello world right on 127.0.0.1.8000, right? So basically localhost 8000. So I'll go ahead and close that. So uh, first things first is we actually don't need any of these uh, app.gets here. Uh, we don't need any of these endpoints. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. So, okay. So first thing we want to do is set up the login endpoint. So that's going to be a get request. So app, whoops, at app dot get, and we'll just call this uh, login. That's fine. Async def, and then login. And I'll make this actually. I'll make this a little more specific. GitHub login. GitHub login. There we go. Okay. So what do we want to do here? So basically, the first step in the GitHub process here is we need to. Uh, do a redirect to GitHub, but the only way for that redirect to work is we have to actually create uh, a application on GitHub that for that token to be authorized against. So here, I'm gonna kind of set up the initial start here. So return redirect response, and then I'm gonna import this. So you can just kind of hover over it and then import like so, or alt enter, that's fine too. So here, first thing we're gonna do is it's gonna take a URL. And I'm gonna use the F format for a string, and then I've got it over here on the side, so I'll go ahead and grab that. So HTTPS, github.com, login, OAuth, authorize, with a parameter, or a query param of client ID. And then here, I'll just put github client ID. Obviously, this doesn't exist yet, right? Uh, and then just for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and put a status code of 302, which is a redirect. So the redirect response is basically just a built-in class that you can use, uh, and it kind of sets up some basic scaffolding for redirects, right? So it requires the URL, and then the status code you don't have to pass, but I think it does something like a 307 or something like that. I think 302 is just cleaner. So next what we want to do is create this variable. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. GitHub client equals blah, whatever that happens to be. Okay, so this is kind of the starting point for this. So now we need to go ahead and create the access token uh, app on GitHub. So let me go ahead and drag this over. So here's my profile. So up in the right-hand corner, I'm gonna click on that, and then settings. Once you get the settings, scroll down all the way, and up oh, there it is, developer settings here on the left. And then we're going to click on OAuth apps, and then we're going to register a new app. So the application name, all this is just test anyway, so we can name whatever we want. Um, I'll just say tutorial homepage URL. Uh, I'm going to use HTTP localhost 8000 because that's just where the app will default to. I'm going to call this test app for the description. And then for the callback, um, as you can see here, I've got localhost 8000 slash GitHub code. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to register the application. So now you notice here that I've got a client ID. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'll paste it into the GitHub client ID. All right, so I'm going to use the format to reformat this code real quick. OK, so let's go ahead and test this out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just restart this app here. Navigate to 8000. Nothing's here. 
slash GitHub login. As you can see here, now it's saying, I'm getting this pop-up page, hey, do you wanna authorize you know, this application uh, as myself as, as GitHub? Um, and if I click on authorize, nothing's gonna happen, right? Because we don't actually have that code set up yet. So going back to here, the next part of the process is if you look at the documentation for GitHub, you have to navigate the user to the GitHub login. And then once the user is logged in, there has to be a redirect to somewhere, right? And we said that that redirect is at app.get GitHub code. And the reason why is because once the user hits that login button on this screen, so once I hit authorize, it's going to give me, whoops, come on, a code as a query parameter and redirect to this endpoint, which is the one that I entered on the registration page. So async def, and we'll just say GitHub code. And inside here, I'll say code is of type string. Right, and that'll take it as a query param. So once we do that, I'll go ahead and just print whatever the code is, right? Just to make sure everything is flowing correctly. So I'll go ahead and restart my application. Now you might be wondering why I restart the application, because by default, if you're doing this in PyCharm, uh, in the configurations, it'll have something, oh, I do have reload. Okay, never mind. I guess I don't have to do that. Um, but it's just out of habit for me. I usually turn it off. So anyways, we started the application. Um, back up here, right, so I'm on this page. I've already said what the URL is for the redirect, so I can go ahead and click on authorize. And no, there's nothing there, right? That's fine. If you can see here, output of this, which is the code that I received, and it printed out here. That was the redirect coming in. Okay, so now we need to go on to the next step. And the next step is going to require the client secret. So similar to what we had here is the client ID, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that line and put in a secret. Now at the moment we don't have a secret, so let me go ahead and navigate back to our OAuth. And notice here there's nothing here. So over here on the right, generate a new client secret. Click on that. There it is, I will copy it. And then I will paste it in that variable. Now I'm gonna delete this application once this tutorial is done, so please don't try to use these credentials. Anyways, so now that we've got that squared away, uh, we now have to take that code and exchange it for the token. So in order to do that, we need to actually make an outgoing request. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the terminal and I'm gonna use pip install HTTPX. Now, you could use uh, the requests library. I know that that one's pretty popular. Uh, the reason why I'm using HTTPX is because it supports asynchronous functionality and because Fast API is based mostly on or entirely on uh, async code, I'm gonna try and stick with that paradigm. So I'm gonna use HTTPX for this. Okay, so it's all squared away, so I'll minimize that. Okay. So in order to do the asynchronous request, we're going to do async with HTTPX dot async client as client. Whoops, client, if I could spell. Okay, and I put an S in there by accident. This is supposed to be an X. Okay, so async with, and then obviously I have to import this, so I'll use the alt enter, import HTTPX, and now we're good to go with that. Okay, so now the response that we receive is going to be the result of awaiting client.post and the URL is going to be equal to, and I have it over here on my other screen. So string of HTTPS github.com slash login OAuth access token. Now, if you try to do it like so, it's not gonna work, you're gonna get unauthorized. So we do have to pass some additional data with this. So before the async, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a params dictionary. First is going to be client ID with the underscore separating them. And that's going to be GitHub client ID. Then we're gonna have client secret. And then GitHub client secret. And lastly, the code that we received with the code. Okay, so that takes care of the params. 
And then the other thing we want to do here is set up a header. And I'm going to use that as a dictionary as well. And this is going to be accept application slash JSON. And that's because that's the format I want to receive the token back as. Now you could use XML or whatever your case is, but I use JSON for everything. I think that's more modern, so we're going to go with JSON. So now we've got that squared away. So now I'm going to go ahead and just use the named uh, arguments here. So params equals params and headers equals headers. Very explicit. Okay. So once we've done that, we want to go ahead and grab that information from the response. So I'm just going to say response JSON is equal to response.json. And then we can print response JSON. So basically, once we get that response back, get the JSON out of it, and then print it out. OK, so let's go ahead and I will restart. Navigate back to our application here. And I'm just going to use the back button. And we'll just go through the whole process. So GitHub login. And now it skipped over that authorized page because it's already saved that I've been recently authorized, right? So it's going to just do the, the code over again with a different code this time. So if I go into our app, we can see here access token. There's my token. And there's my token type. And then I didn't pass a scope, so there is no scope. OK, great. So now at this point, we can actually do something with this response JSON. So I'm actually going to go ahead and remove that print statement because I don't need it anymore. So what I want to do here is let's say I want to get the user profile information for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and say access token is equal to response JSON access token. And then we're going to do another async with uh, the HTTPS. So async with HTTPX dot async client as, and I'll just use the same variables. I don't really care if it overwrites them. Headers dot update. Well, yeah, I guess we do that. Update. And then we're going to pass in a dictionary entry of authorization. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. And then a format bearer, because we got a bearer token. And then whatever the access token was. Once we've done that, response is equal to await client dot get. And then here I've got the URL over on my other screen. HTTPS api.github.com slash user with headers equal to headers. And then instead of just printing it, I'm going to go ahead and return response.json. OK, so once we've done that, when we actually go through this whole process, this whole flow, uh, it should give me back my public profile information on GitHub. So let's go ahead and restart the application. And then I will go ahead and actually close Chrome completely because I want to go through the whole thing. So let's try this again. Hopefully it didn't save my information. So we'll go to 12700 blah, 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 GitHub login. Uh, it did. OK, so it didn't hit me to that authorize. But anyways, you can see here that we made it in. It authorized uh, a code. The code got exchanged for an access token. That access token then got used to request the public profile information for uh, the, whoever owns the access token, which is me. And then here is that information presented uh, as a return value. So that's just a really simple over, overview, kind of run through, quick and dirty. Uh, of using the GitHub OAuth flow. Hopefully you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.